Hi, my name is Kathleen Rooney. I'm a first year biomedical engineering major at Georgia Tech and I'm currently enrolled in Physics 2211 with Professor Curtis. So for this extra credit video, I actually attended two lectures, but I'm going to talk to you about Baseball and Physics by Dr. Alan Nathan today because I found that um, lecture to be the most interesting one that I attended. Um, Dr. Nathan is a professor at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and I thought that was kind of cool because I was almost going to go there um, until I visited Georgia Tech and fell in love with the school and I'm so glad I came here but I think it would be kind of cool if I had a physics professor to be Dr. Nathan even though Professor Curtis is awesome but just to like have someone that is so famous for what he does as your teacher would be awesome but I'm really glad I'm here so, Dr. Nathan basically spends his time watching baseball and analyzing like the physics and science behind hitting a home run. And he has become so, like, his work is so famous that he was on 60 Minutes this Sunday. And also, on May 1st, there's going to be a follow-up segment on Showtime. So, if you missed the 60 Minutes um, episode, I would very much recommend watching this one. Um, so we're going to start learning about the physics behind baseball now. He, um, Dr. Nathan watched so much that he got the science down to an equation, which I'm going to like list right here. Um, basically Q is the coalition efficiency and the V of the pitch is as it crosses home plate because most baseball pitchers can throw like 90 miles per hour but then it kind of slows down as it crosses home plate because there's like a certain distance so it's actually more like 80 miles per hour um and what um if you notice that there's one plus q for the bat and so that means that it's not as important how fast the pitches but as how fast you swing the bat because each mile per hour of bat of the bat swing is actually equal to about six feet in distance the ball travels and each mile per hour of how fast the pitches only um, is about one foot in distance the ball travels so it's much more important to get speed on your bat than to get um, speed on your pitch but obviously a fast pitch and like a fast bat swing is awesome and could be a home run if you're lucky um, so the coalition efficient depends on the coefficient of restitution which is kind of like the moment of inertia of the bat and so it's like also the weight um, and the bounciness of the ball. So, a lot of people think there's, like, a way to find a sweet spot. Like, some bats, I know composite bats, I used to play softball, those were really awesome because they had a bigger sweet spot than a normal aluminum bat. And so, um, that's, like, if you hit it there, it's going to go far. So, you really want to use this to find the sweet spot so you can hit a home run too. Um, the moment of inertia is related to the quark, um, quarking of a bat, which is where some people would drill a hole through the barrel, and so there's like less weight, but it also equals less power. And so um, what Dr. Nathan found was that it actually doesn't affect anything, which is kind of interesting. Because a lot of people do it because they think it's like they can swing faster, but because it kind of decreases the power. So the moment of inertia is about the same. Um, and then also, one of the things that I actually found most interesting about this lecture was that you don't, it, after the ball hits the bat, it doesn't matter what you do. And I know coaches usually say, oh, you have to follow through, but um, there was one no hands home run by Todd Frazier in May 2012 
where he goes swinging and lets go of the bat and he gets a home run. And it's crazy because it kind of disproves everything every coach has ever said about following through. But, you know, because the handle moves after the barrel because the ball hits the bat. The ball will hit the barrel and then, yeah. So nothing on the hand handle end matters, like the knob the handle, the grip at all. So it's kind of crazy. And I didn't believe him until he showed us a picture of the no hands home run. And then I was like, okay, this is true. It's weird, but it's true. I guess that's science. Science could be like completely random and you wouldn't expect it, but it happens. And then also lower air density means the ball travels farther. And so that's why there was like a controversy over like a humidifier, um, putting the balls in, in some places, and in like Colorado and Denver, um, balls travel differently than they do in like New Orleans or San Francisco, and also um, temperature and elevation affect distance the ball travels. So that's a lot of physics over like something that seems really trivial could mean a lot in a game because home runs are kind of hard to come by because, you know, an average baseball game only has like seven runs, maybe less. So I think, I think like in the future, teams might try to exploit this physics and realize that, you know, it's important to have good players, but also like we need this material to help us win because I guess like the owners want to win the fans want to win the players want to win and so it's kind of sad that something that's supposed to be fun is like so serious now but I guess that's life okay I hope you enjoyed the video um and it's a beautiful day so I would if I inspired you to do anything I would hope it'd be to play baseball because it's going to be too hot soon and you won't go outside. So go outside now. Have a great day. And I hope you watch Dr. Nathan's video because I sure found it interesting and I hope you do too. Okay. Thank you. Bye.